Hey, as you find a seat, uh, would you thank the band for leading us in worship tonight? They did a great job. And I know you can do uh, more than one thing at a time, so as you're finding, finding your seat, I want you to listen. Remember, Morgan went over this already. If you're a junior and senior in the house, um, in, in about 15 weeks, right, in 15 weeks, we'll be headed to uh, Passion in Dallas. And, uh, and so we only have about 30 spots left. And so if you want one of those spots, uh, you need to sign up. You sign up at ablazeevents.com. Uh, and then uh, uh, more quickly than 15 weeks, in November, we'll be all gathered here on this campus for Global Impact. And we're, got, we're doing some cool things. And so I just put those dates up there uh, for you to remember those dates uh, and be ready to sleep in boxes come November. Cool? All right. So we're kicking off a new series tonight. Uh, it's called Old School. Drew did a great job. Everybody say thanks to Drew for that great game at the beginning. Come on, you knew better than that. Say thanks to Drew for that game. That's right. The series is called Old School because this semester, this fall, we're gonna spend the next few weeks actually in the Old Testament, looking at some of the old stories, some of the stories you'll know, you'll be familiar with, like Adam and Eve, Noah in the big boat, Abraham and Isaac, some of the stories you may not be so familiar with, like Cain and Abel, or Ruth, or some of the judges. And so, um, but we're gonna spend a few weeks in the, in the Old Testament, but we're really not just reading to read, we're not reading like you read um, the Iliad or the Odyssey in school. We're reading because, I don't know if you understand this, I don't know if you know this, but the Old Testament is still all about Jesus. And every page of the Bible, the, the whole story, when you put it together, it's about Jesus. And so we're gonna read the Old Testament stories, some of these old school stories, but we're gonna be asking the Lord to speak to our hearts and so as show us something that we didn't already know about Jesus and about um, who he is to us. And so just really to kick things off tonight, I thought we'd have a little bit of fun and um, I need a volunteer, a high school boy, but before you volunteer, uh, I just wanna tell you what, what's available to you. Uh, I brought $20 with me uh, tonight and so I'm gonna be giving away uh, $20 to a high school guy who is willing to come up on stage with me um, and, and let me have access to your cell phone. So now just sit down, close your eyes, think about it for a second. Who's a high school guy in the room that wants 20 bucks and is willing to give me access to their cell phone? All right. All right, Drew, come on up, Drew. Drew, ready to go to school? Smithson Valley, everybody say hi, Drew. Did you guys win your homecoming game last week? No. Oh, I'm sorry, I mentioned that. All right, let me, uh, unlock, can you unlock your cell phone for me? All right, Drew, we're gonna play a little game called cell phone roulette. You ever played cell phone roulette before? Nope. You have any idea the way we're gonna play cell phone roulette? I know how roulette works. You know how roulette works. Okay, so what I need you to do is open the phone app. We're going to old school. We're actually gonna make a phone call on your phone. All right, open, open up your contacts so I can see them. Okay, now hand me your phone. Um, oops, wait. Uh, this is an Android. I don't know how to work it. And how do we get back? Come on, Chris. Come on. I know. All right, so I'm going to scroll through here. You hold the phone. I'm going to scroll through here. I mean, the, 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 the mic. I'm going to scroll through here, and wherever my phone, wherever my finger lands, we're going to make a call to that person. But we're going to put it on speakerphone, and you can't tell them that we're all here. You're just gonna have to try to have a conversation the best way you, you know how, or the best way you can, and if you make it to a minute, then I'll give you 20 bucks, all right? Cool? All right, so I'm just gonna scroll up, scroll down, scroll up, scroll down, scroll. Yeah, you gotta be quiet. You can't let them, this person know, because we're gonna put it on speakerphone so you guys can hear. All right, so I'm not gonna look anymore, and boom. Uh, Ryan Ruff, that name ring a bell? All right, so. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> so we're about to call Ryan. Come on over here, Drew. Oh, Let's God. see if he answers. All right, all right, uh, come on close. How do I put on the speakerphone? Uh, over there, here we go. Drew, put the mic up here.
All right, I don't think Ryan's answering. Let's try somebody else. We're running out of time. <laughs> Ryan, he just sent, he's just sent, Ryan just sent you to voicemail, Drew. Uh, yeah, All right, let's scroll, 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 and boom. Uh, it just says Maddie. <laughs> Girl or guy? It's a, it's a freshman girl. No, okay. I don't have a girlfriend. All right, so here we go. We're calling oh, Maddie. God. We're calling Maddie on the speakerphone. All right, here we go. Check. Hey, can somebody find Kyle right quick? I don't think this is on. Oh, God. Dude, nobody wants to take your phone call. Nobody likes me. <laughs> there we go. Let's just leave her a message, a voicemail. Oh, God. <laughs> but you can't tell her what we're doing. All right, you want to try one more? All right, last one. Doesn't work. Then it's epic fail. All right. That's like the 20 bucks set, right? Yeah. All right. And uh, Andrew, Andy Childs. Oh, yeah, I know him. Okay. All right. One more time. But this time. Huh? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're going to find your mom. Go to M's. M's. M. Mom. Here we go. Hey, Mom. Hey. Uh, what are we having for dinner? Um, I, I don't know. Why? Just curious. Just trying to pass time. Okay. Aren't you at church? <laughs> no. What? Hello? Hello. No. You're not? Where are you? I'm just kidding. I'm at church. All right, I think we're going to let Drew finish that call on his own. <laughs> but here's your $20, Drew. Give him a round of applause. So... Didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. Sometimes that happens. But uh, I wanted us to start uh, with that little activity because I think sometimes for some of us, reading the Bible can be like having an awkward conversation. Drew's having one with his mom right now. And, and it's an awkward conversation because maybe we forget that when we read the Bible, we're actually listening to the voice of God. When we read the Bible, he's speaking to us. We're actually supposed to learn. It's not just a, an exercise like happens at school when, when we're reading to master content, all right? And so we, I wanted us to start with that, but there's also sometimes really when we get to the Old Testament, there's the awkwardness of the stories that we learned when we were little, right? Or a veggie tale that may still be our favorite thing to watch. And we start reading the story and we're like, well, I kind of know how this one ends already. And it's one of the awkward things that happens to us when we read the Bible. Am I supposed to keep on reading the next 57 verses when I, when I know how the story ends? And so what I want you to do tonight is realize that, that, the, that as we read both the Old Testament and the New Testament, we're, the Bible tells us we're hearing the voice of God. He's got something to say to us. People ask me all the time, Chris, I really wish I could hear God. We talk a lot about hearing the voice of the Lord here. And my answer is always the same. Open your Bible and read it out loud. 
you'll hear the voice of God. And so tonight, as we um, jump into a study of the Old Testament, we're actually gonna start in the New Testament because it helps us understand how it is that God speaks, how it is that you can know for sure that you hear the voice of God. All right, so I want you to ask your neighbor, does God still speak? Ask, ask, ask your other neighbor, um, how does God speak? Okay, because I've been praying, I've been praying that you would get this. Shh, watch this, guys. I've been praying that you would get this. And in your conversations in life group tonight, you would be able to process this, that God speaks, yet the answer is yes. And, and we just have to take a moment to, to, put, to press pause in our life and not look at the Bible as, as a study thing, not look at it as something that we have to do because we call ourselves Christians or because we go to church, but that it's this collection of stories. It's a collection of things that people wrote down when God actually did speak to them. And, and it's a collection of experiences that people had. And it's also um, some ways in which we can understand more about God, and it's these collection of things that help us know the truth that God, yes, God does speak, and he has something to say to you. And so if you have your Bibles, find Hebrews chapter one tonight. We're gonna read three verses together. If you don't have a Bible, come talk to me, come talk to Morgan, come talk to Drew, ask your life group leader. We wanna give you a Bible, but I wanna encourage you to bring your Bible each and every week to, to life group. You're gonna get more out of it. So let's jump into Hebrews chapter one, uh, verse one. The Bible tells us that long ago, so it's talking about the Old Testament, and watch this, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. And, and this is a really cool verse because the Bible is telling us that the answer to the question is yes, God still speaks. Because when it tells us that long ago in the Old Testament times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers, it's, it is saying it, the, the answer to the question is yes. God spoke both audibly, out loud, like my voice is speaking to you right now so that people could hear, all right? So he did speak that way. And then he spoke to the prophets sometimes um, by a vision or a dream. So it's a really cool verse. It's telling us the answer is yes, God does speak and he did speak. But something changed. Something changed in the New Testament. We know that because of verse two. Check this out. It tells us that in these last days, so in the New Testament time is, is these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. That's Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. Say it again. Say Jesus. Jesus. By his son Jesus, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. So the New Testament represents a new way in which God is communicating to his people. The New Testament, through Jesus, represents a new way in which God is speaking to his people. And when the Bible teaches us that God is speaking to us by his son, what it means is, number one, the things that Jesus actually said. Like in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, if you've got a red letter Bible, you open it up and you see the red letters. Those are things that Jesus actually really did say. They're not just, they're not just made up stories. So that was God speaking. Like when Jesus walked up to the tree and he looked up in the tree and he saw Zacchaeus and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down for I'm going to your house today. Right? So that was God speaking through Jesus saying, hey, I'm God and I'm gonna go meet with you at your house. So he, he spoke audibly, but, but it also means that God spoke through the way that Jesus did things, okay? And so again, when we look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospels and the life of Jesus, we know that God's speaking through what Jesus actually did. Like when he fed 5,000 people with two, two fish and three loaves and he broke it and kept on breaking it and kept on breaking it and he fed 5,000 people with that little thing, right? It's, it's God speaking through what Jesus did because God wants us to know that he's the God of miracles. God wants us to know that he is a provider for us. So you see how God's speaking through what Jesus did? But this, this third way, I really want you to get this tonight. God is also speaking to, to the people in the New Testament, but he's speaking to us because we have the New Testament and we have the stories that we can read. He's speaking to us by the way that Jesus changed people's lives. Because we know at the end of the Gospels that Jesus died. He died on the cross for the sins of the world. 
and he spent time in the grave, and then he rose again, and then he, he ascended into heaven. And then after that, the church kept on going. And in Acts chapter 9, there's a lady named Dorcas. Anybody know that Dorcas was in the Bible? A few people. Her name was also Tabitha, but I picked her because if you hate your name, then you can just say, thank you, Lord, that I'm not named Dorcas, okay? Because that's, that's what this lady's name was. But when Jesus changed her life, you know what she did? She didn't have a lot of skills. She couldn't stand and preach. She couldn't stand and teach people. She couldn't heal people. But what she did was she just started to make things for other people. And she made clothes for people who didn't have those clothes. And in Acts chapter 9, the Bible tells us that Dorcas died. She fell asleep. She didn't wake up. And Peter walked up to her and he said, hey, Dorcas, stand up or wake up. Come off of the mat. How do you think Peter knew how to do that? Because he saw Jesus do it. And so Jesus changed Dorcas's life because she, she became a nice person who made these things for people who didn't have them. And he changed Peter's life because he saw Jesus heal people and he, he knew and he had the confidence and the faith to do that too. And so God was speaking through that story and telling us what he, something that he wants us to know about his character and about his nature, something that he wants us to know that, that can change us because of, a, of the way he changed those people's life. So this, this past week, um, I, bought, I bought something on Amazon, uh, and I brought it here tonight. I, I was really aiming for or hoping for a, a T-shirt cannon, and so I, I found this sale on Amazon, and it was a potato gun. Anybody ever had a potato gun before? And the way the potato, shh, hold on, the way the potato gun works is you take some hairspray, and you spray it into the barrel just like that, and then you threw, that was gross, and then you threw on, you screw on this igniter switch like this, okay, and I didn't put a potato in there because it would actually hurt somebody, I just put a wad of paper in there, and then you just, it, hopefully this works, and then you flip the igniter switch, and boom, there it goes, right, and I was, I was really hoping, there's nothing on that piece of paper, it's just literally a piece of paper, Hold on, but I was hoping for is that I could take this potato gun and make it into a t-shirt cannon. You know, like they have the Spurs game? And I was wanting to be able to stuff the t-shirt down in there and then hit the button and boom, it would fire off t-shirts at, at you guys. Um, but what I didn't do was I didn't read the fine print. I, I, I read the price, I read the reviews, I knew this would work, but I didn't read how big the actual barrel was. And when I got it, I kid you not, I took a t-shirt and I tried to jam it down in there and it doesn't work, okay? And what, what, I, what, what I want you to see tonight about the Bible is that it doesn't have any fine print. Everywhere you go, everywhere, everything that you read, you know you can trust. Yes, there's some little editorial comments maybe at the bottom of your Bible, but, but what I'm talking about is the actual verses, the actual things on the page. There, there's no fine print. And that's really important because whether you're 12 or whether you're 18, you can know because there's not going to be this surprise, like surprise, gotcha, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I am God, but I don't speak. That's not at the end of the story. What is, is, is this verse, and that's really important. The fact that you can trust this, there's no fine print, is really important to you getting what I hope you get out of Life Group tonight. Check this out in verse 3. The Bible tells us that Jesus Jesus is the radiance of the glory of God, and he's the exact imprint of God's nature, and he upholds the universe by, by the word of his power. And so the Bible wants us to see Jesus and God on the, on the same level. You know, there's, the, there's, there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and they're the same person. And so when we see Jesus say something, when we see Jesus do something, or when we see the way that Jesus changed somebody's life, we see God. There's no fine print, guys. And you can know that God's speaking to you through when you read his word and you see something about Jesus. And, and maybe your heart gets like, oh, oh, I, I probably should start changing the way I live. You can know God is speaking to, to you. I don't know if, if you've ever thought about it like this, but, but I have. I'm, I've, I've often been like in a, in a situation where I knew I, I really needed um, God to answer a prayer. And I was like, God, I, I really wish I lived back in the day when you spoke out loud. Anybody ever think that? 
Anybody ever pray the crazy prayer? God, I really wish that you would just write it in the sky. Write in the sky what you want me to do. You see, what the Bible wants us to know is that we live in the greatest time in all of history. Yeah, it'd been nice to see Moses part the Red Sea. Yeah, it'd been nice to see Jesus feed the 5,000. But at the end of verse three, we see this, that, that it says that after making the purification for sins, after paying for your sins, after paying for my sins, Jesus sat down at the right hand of God the Father, the majesty on high. And what this means is that when, when Jesus paid for your sins, you know you can trust the Bible. Or let me rephrase that. Because Jesus paid for your sins, you know that you can trust the Bible. So in a few weeks, when we're reading an Old Testament story that's teaching you to have courage, you can trust the Bible. When we're reading, in a few weeks, when we're reading a, an Old Testament story that's challenging you, and maybe, maybe you realize that you've got a friend group that is, is, not, is not the greatest for you, and they don't encourage you, and they don't build you up, and they don't, they don't ca cause you to become, or to want to become more like Jesus, and you're reading an Old Testament story, and you see it in there because it's happening to somebody in the story, you can trust the Bible, because Jesus paid for your sins. He he won the battle for you so that when we read the stories, when we look for his voice, we, we would trust him. You know, my, my daughters aren't here, Anna and Sarah Grace aren't here, they're on a school retreat, so I can tell the story without, without embarrassing them. Uh, but um, uh, a couple of days ago, we were, at, we, were at a house, we were in our house, and we were, or let me rephrase that and just say, um, some of you, if you've been here for a while, you know that... Um, I just have a rule in my house that is my daughters, I've got two of them, um, they don't, they're not gonna be able to date until they're 35. Um, it's just, that's just a rule, right? Um, and, and I just wanna offer for free to, to, to some of you who are thinking about how, uh, stepping into a relationship, um, maybe you're struggling in a relationship, don't, don't rush to put a label on something. You can be great friends, you can hang out with people, you can even like somebody who's pretty or like somebody who's cute, uh, but, but don't rush to put a label on it. You'll only get hurt in the end because chances are most of you aren't sitting next to the person that you're gonna spend the rest of your life with, even if you think you are. Okay, so don't rush to put a label on something, but we were talking about special friends. That's what we call them in our house, just special friends. And so the girls were asking me some questions about how I started dating their mom, dating Anne Marie. Now, I was in college when we started uh, dating and um, they were asking me some questions and that reminded me of of the story that I always think about when I think about dating Anne Marie. So we had been hanging out for a little while and um, we'd gone to dinner with some of our friends and then I was taking her home and I pulled up to her house and I got out of the car and I walked her up to the front like a gentleman would do. Um, and we just started talking and I was trying to, 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 to get the conversation to a point where I could say something like, hey, I had a really nice time tonight. I'd love to hang out with you again sometime. So I, I did, I just asked her that question. And she just changed the subject. She just started talking about the Spurs or something like that. I'm like, what just happened? And we just started talking about the Spurs, like maybe, well, maybe, maybe I wasn't that clear. And so we talked about, I was a gentleman, we talked about the Spurs for a few minutes. And, and then I just said, hey, you had a really nice time tonight. I'd love to hang out with you again sometime. And no answer. She changed the subject again. Start talking about going back to school and the classes that I take at Baylor. And I'm like, dude, my heart is about beating out of my chest at this point. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, uh, what's wrong with this woman, right? And so I, I'm polite, I'm a gentleman, I'm talking uh, through things about school, asking her some questions. And then the third time, finally I just say, hey, I don't know if you got it the first or the second time, but I, I would love to hang out with you again, maybe next Thursday. smiled and winked at me and said, maybe. And I laughed and I didn't know what to think about it, but we're married today, so I think you'll know how the story ends. But, but I want you, what I want you to, to understand tonight is that questions like that, yes or no questions, they kind of build anticipation, don't they? Right? You ask somebody a question and you wanna know the answer. And the, the longer it, it's prolonged, the more anticipation is built. Is she gonna say yes or is she gonna say no? Does God speak? Is it yes or is it no? It builds this anticipation. 
And I want you to start thinking about the Old Testament that way tonight. As we get ready to study it, I want you to think about how the Old Testament builds this anticipation in our hearts and our minds for the coming of Jesus. And how Jesus came to change everything. How Jesus came to restore what was broken. How Jesus came so to, to this world to die on the cross for your sins and for my sins so that you could know you could trust the Bible, so that you could know you could trust God, and so that you could want to have a relationship with him. But guess what? The best thing about a relationship with Jesus and the best thing about the Bible is it has all of the anticipation without the fear of rejection. You don't have to worry about God saying, no. No, I don't wanna to talk to you. No, you're, you're not good enough to have a relationship with me. It has all of the anticipation, some amazing stories that God wants us to learn from and to hear from, but, but without the fear of rejection. So the answer is clear tonight, that yes, God speaks. He's got something to say to you. He's got something to say to me. The question for most of us is, will I take the time just to open his word and to, to wait in his presence and to ask him to speak to me? Because most people that I, that I meet and that I talk to, a lot of people your age, some people older, and they're in that crisis moment, they don't take the time just to wait. They take the time to come to God's word and ask him to speak to them through it. So all the collection of all the stories, all, all the things in the book are, are all the evidence of God saying, yes, I still speak. He doesn't always say yes to every question. You don't go home and say, hey, mom and dad, I know I can get that tongue piercing because God, uh, Chris said that the Bible says yes. No, no, that's, that's not, that's not what it says. But it, it's all on every page about Jesus, and it's answering the question, does God speak? Does he speak to you? Does he have a plan for your life? And the answer is yes. But there's, there's one more thing that I want you to, to see about, about, the, about the Old Testament, or uh, about this yes, is that God's, God's answers, they never change. You know, this, this last week, um, we asked out on Instagram, uh, what, what you guys thought old school was. And I just wanted to say thanks to, thanks to Katie and Sarah and Emma Kate and Anna for giving us some answers. Um, somebody told us that white tennis shoes are old school. Somebody told us that schools in the 1900s, I think they meant 1990s, but they wrote 1900s is old school. The Fresh Prince of Bel Air is old school. Saved by the Bell is old school. And then somebody, I, I think it was Anna, put Chris Dillashaw. But um, I guess I am old school. I'm wearing white tennis shoes. But um, I was thinking about this week. Um, I was alive when, uh, when the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was on for the first time. You couldn't go home and get out a device or flip a channel and watch all the seasons all at once. No, we had to wait till, I think it was Friday nights. Wait till Friday night to catch the episode. And you see, um, it, 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 when you ask the question, what's old school? It depends on who you talk to. Depends on how, person, how old that person is. If you ask your mom and dad, they might say something else. If you ask your grandma or grandpa, they might say something else. And if you're, if you're lucky enough to have a, a great grandmother, she's, she, he or she is certainly gonna say something else. It depends on who you talk to. But, but with God, the answer never changes. And so there's answers that he has for us throughout the scriptures. The question is, are we gonna take the time to, to read and to listen to his voice? I don't know what, what brought you to church tonight. I don't know what, maybe it was just to see a friend, but maybe you're dealing with something. And so I'm gonna close with this. I just want you to see real quickly some of the things that God says yes to throughout the Old Testament. So hang on, listen clearly, put your phone away, just sit up in your chair, watch the screen. I want you to see what God says yes to through the Old Testament. Check this out. In Genesis, God says Yes, I have a promise for your life. In Exodus, God says, yes, I have power. In Leviticus, God says, yes, I have a plan for your purity. In Numbers, God says, yes, I, I will give you perseverance. 
In Deuteronomy, God says, yes, I can show you how to prepare. In Joshua, God says, yes, I have a gift for you. In Judges, God says, yes, I am even the God of rebels. In Ruth, God says, yes, I'm the God of redemption. In 1 Samuel, God says, yes, um, I am the God that wants your heart. In 2 Samuel, God says, yes, I am the king. I am a king, and yes, I have a throne. In 1 and 2 Kings, God says, yes, I am the God of all people. And in 1 and 2 Chronicles, he says, yes, I am the God of all people, part two, in case you missed it the first time. In Ezra, yes, I am the God who is to be worshiped. In Esther, yes, I am the God of your hard times. If you're having a hard time tonight, go home, crack open the book of Esther. It's real short. You could read it in about an hour. If you're having a hard time, God's saying, yes, I am your God. In Nehemiah, he's saying, yes, I am the God who will protect you. In Job, he's saying, yes, I am the God who even, who, uh, over you even when you hurt. In Psalms, he's saying, yes, I am the God worthy of all your praise. In Proverbs, he's saying to you tonight, yes, I am the God who will give you wisdom. In Ecclesiastes, he's saying, yes, I am the God who will give you a purpose. In the Song of Solomon, he's saying, yes, I am the God who created passion. We're just about halfway done with the Old Testament now. And Isaiah he said, yes, I am the God that will never share my glory. In Jeremiah, yes, I am the God that will, that will weep for you. Did you know that? God will weep for you. Yes, God's saying through the book of Jeremiah, I'm that God. In Lamentations, yes, I'm the God of faithfulness. In Ezekiel, yes, I'm the God who gives visions. In Daniel's, yes, in Daniel, yes, I'm the God of history. In Hosea, I am the God even when you are unfaithful. Yes, in Joel, yes, I'm the God over the things that will do harm to you. In Amos, yes, I am the God that will rescue you from oppression. In Obadiah, yes, I am the God that will put you on the mountaintop. If you need some good news, open the book of Obadiah. Jonah, yes, I am the God of compassion. Micah, yes, I am the God of justice. Nahum, yes, I am the God of wrath. Habakkuk, yes, I am the God that is in complete control. Zephaniah, yes, I am the God of judgment. Haggai, yes, I am the God of renewal. Last two books of the Old Testament. Zechariah, Yes, I'm the God of restoration. Malachi, yes, I'm the God that loves your worship. So I want you to stand. We're gonna prepare our hearts to head to life group by worshiping him. And I didn't expect you to, to wrap your brain around all that. Maybe there's just a word that you heard. You're like, man, I'm gonna hear God's voice. I'm gonna go back and find Obadiah, Nahum, Judges, Ruth, and know that in the coming days when we gather here in this place, that's what we're gonna be doing. Just looking and asking the Lord to speak to us. So let's pray. God, I thank you that you are the God who speaks. The answer is yes. You spoke to, you spoke to the prophets in the Old Testament time. You spoke in the New Testament time through Jesus, and you speak to us when we open your word. And I pray for these students that I love. I pray that that would be a foundational stone in their life that they would hold on to, hold on to tightly, that they would, they would be students who don't fear the Bible because it's a book that's bound like a textbook, but they would love your word. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would create a deep love for your word in their hearts. And they would run to it and they would listen to your voice through it. Thank you, Jesus that because you died on the cross and you made purification for our sins, we now know that we can trust the Bible. It's not a book, it's your word, it's your breath on a page. In Jesus' name I pray and believe.